Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in last episode we had the season simulation and we finished with a nice record going 46, 22, and 12 and also 2 but I think it's 46, 24, and 12 basically. So we're up here in the playoffs yet again going up against the San Jose Sharks here in the first round of the playoffs. As you can see the last game of the regular season we actually also played San Jose and we won by a score of 4-3. to three. So I'm hoping that during the playoffs we have the same type of idea where we could win games against him scoring a decent amount of goals. Um, so I showed you guys their lines in last episode but I'm going to show you guys again just in case you forget because I honestly forget myself too so I kind of want to refresh myself a bit with their team. Oh yeah I kind of remember now. Okay so first line they got Sturm, Beach, and Orr. Second line, Strom, Corbin, and Dixon. So as you can see, five of their top six is pretty decent for a top six, but then you get a little bit of a weak guy in Dixon, and then their bottom six is pretty weak nonetheless because most guys are in the 70s with a couple 80s. Defensively, they're also pretty weak. As you can see, most of their guys are like top four defensemen. Some of them are top six. Well, actually, yeah, they're top four down here, bottom four. Those guys are all technically top six defensemen, I think. Yep, and then also with one of their top twos is a top six, so that's a bit of a problem for them, I think, but I don't know how they assimilate. And then goaltending is also a bit of an issue as Steve Shields is drawing off quite a bit, and Pozel's not much of a backup. And then also they're currently missing one of their better players in Michael Holmquist, so I think we should be able to beat these guys if we could shut down their uh, top player, Marco Sturm. Because he's probably going to be the difference maker for them if they have a chance in winning the series. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into round one. I think we have home ice the entire playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember where we finished in the standings, but hopefully we do. Game number one, let's see if we could take it. We have the experience, so we should be able to do this. First period of game number one, and it is scoreless. Shots are 9-8 to eight in favor of the Sharks, so we're actually getting outshot just barely. But a good performance in that from Ross Carter. Second period, and there's the offense that we need. Gerbeshkov, Forsberg, and Sackett can make it 3-0 for us after two periods of play. They're still out shooting us surprisingly, 18-14, to 14, but it's just been a good performance in net from Carter. And Shields has kind of dropped the ball a bit, which is kind of what I expected because... He's kind of a low overall in comparison to Carter because Carter's like a 95. And Zubov beats Polzel to make it 4-0, so I guess they put Polzel in the net. And Forsberg makes it 5-0. Hopefully this entire series is like that where we score a lot of goals. Good performance from our offense, good performance from our defense also. And we are going to take a 1-0 series lead. Nicely done, boys. We got outshot in that game 26 to 25, but we still scored five goals and they yet they have yet to score one. So Grubeshkov from Flurry and Darmour, Forsberg from Grubeshkov and Drury, Sakic from Darmour and Strudwick. Um wait, did I say Strudwick from Darmour and Strudwick? I think that's Sakic from Darmour and Strudwick. I don't even know why I said that. I think I did at least. Uh Zubov from Keith and Strudwick and Forsberg from Sakic and Keith. So a lot of guys actually with multiple assists and multiple points in that game. Carter takes home the first star, Forsberg second start, two goals, and Gripeshkov the third. Hopefully we can continue that the entire playoffs and this entire round to be uh, precise, I guess. Okay, also our HL team is definitely not making the playoffs, which sucks because Patrick Wall was playing pretty decent down there because I didn't show you guys their HL stats, but he was doing pretty decent in the minors. Um, if for some reason we have a goal injury, at least he'll get called up, but still. First period of game number two, and it's 2 nothing us, so once again we're scoring goals. Zubov's got his second and third of the series already, and we're only in the second game. Shots are 15-8 to eight in favor of us, so this time around we're pe uh, peppering our goaltender in shots. Let's see what happens here in the second, and it's 4-1, to one, so they finally scored a goal, but we still scored two more to add to that. So Forsberg made it 3-0, or makes it 3-1 to to get them a bit in the game, and then Darmour making it a 4-1 to game. Let's see what happens here in the third period. And Strom makes it a 4-2 to game, so they got two goals here in this period, or in this game. Power play and Ozelinch makes it 5-2, to so back-to-back -back games where we've scored five goals. Pretty good performance from the offense. 
pretty much what I expected, though, with their weak defense and their weak goaltending. Penalty kill at the end of the game, and we just scored another goal. Galchenyuk puts the icing on the cake, and it is a 6-2 victory, and we have a 2-0 series lead. We're also outscoring them 11-2 after the first two games, which is pretty crazy. So Zubov from Keith and uh, Zidorov, Zubov from Strudwick, Forsberg from Drian Henry, uh, then Orr scored from Sturman Hobson, Darmore from Drian McCardle, Strom from Dixon, Oslin from Strudwick and Keith, and Galchenyuk from Sakic and McCardle. So I think Strudwick had, yeah, two more assists. So Strudwick's been picking up some good apples in this series so far. Zubov gets the top star two goals, Carter the second star 27 saves, and Keefe the third star. I don't think Keefe's going to win another Conn Smythe this year if we win the Stanley Cup, and that's not good. Theo Fleury, one of our veterans, probably in the last few games of his career, has just broken his foot, and he's out till May to 22nd, so he's not coming back till maybe the conference finals if we get that far, but that's a pretty big injury. Yikes. Um, who do we have as a replacement? Oh yeah, this Petrovic guy. At least he's not a bad young player, it looks like. So he's going to be in our lineup. And he's also going to be playing... Well, he's not going to be playing on the 3-on-3. Three three. There's no 3-on-3 three three in playoffs. Just imagine if there was, though. That would be pretty intense. Like, to watch that in person. Like, damn. So Petrovic is in the lineup. Hopefully that 20-year-old could help us out. Just sucks that Theo Fleury's career might be done now. Because usually when guys get injured late in their careers and stuff like that, they don't come back till like the season's done with and then they retire or something like that happens. So let's see if our offense can continue here in San Jose as we head into game number three. We have 11 goals in two games. Will we score more? First period of game three, and it is three to two for us. So we continue to score, but this time around they score some. So Forsberg makes it one nothing. Dixon ties the game up, and then Petrovic, who just got put into the lineup, gives us a two to one lead. Henry gives us the three to one lead, but a late goal from Corbin gets the Sharks back in the game. Let's see what happens here in the second, and it's four to three. So still a very tight game. Stevenson ties it up, and then Ralph Culp. Gives us the lead going into the third. Let's see what happens here in this third period of play. And once again, we just hit five goals in the third straight game. Strom, though, makes it a one-goal game. And there's another goal. Ozlinch giving us a two-goal lead, and they just pull within one once again. Damn, this is a very offensive-based game, and I was not expecting Carter to let in five goals in the game in the playoffs, but he's done so. And we are going to take it still 6-5, to five, so three straight games where we score five or more goals. It's probably just because of how weak our defense is, because normally we don't score that much goals in threes. So Forsberg from Strobik and Drury, Petrovic from Drury and Grbeshkov, Henry from Jarmur and Drury. Um, who else have we got here? Kulp from Grbeshkov and Opozo, Galchenyuk from Sakic and Strobik, and Ozlin from Kulp and Ulnov. A lot of offense in that game. Three stars are all Sharks players as well. Dixon with three points, Strom with two points, and Corbin the third star. So not a great game for Carter and the defense, but we still managed to score a lot of goals. And now we have a combined total of 17 goals in four games, which is absolutely absurd if that continues this entire playoffs. But it could be just this round. Like I said, we're probably going to run into a very good defensive team next round if we get there, which is more than likely the case. Let's see if we could sweep the San Jose Sharks and head into the round two. First period of game four, and once again, we have two goals. Ryland Keith makes it 1 0, Strub makes it 2 0, and LaBelle pulls them within one. Second period, and once again, we have four goals in a game. Jesus Christ. Sorry if you're uh, religious. Uh, Gavin Ogpozo with his first ever playoff goal makes it 3-0. And then Amari Roach makes it 4 to nothing, And we are a period away from sweeping the San Jose Sharks with a dominating fashion in terms of offense. 10 minutes away from sweeping the Sharks now as they have a long power play, but they can't convert power play for us and we don't either. And Sakic makes us hit 5 goals for the 4th straight game. Nordstrom gets them on the board, but we are going to sweep them with ease as we scored five goals in all four of those games. Goddamn. 
So Key from Zor Zadorov, Strobik from Zubov and Zadorov, Okpozo from Petrovic and Kulp, Roach from Drury and Grbeshkov, and Sakic from Galchenyuk and Strobik. So a good bounce back game for Carter, but our offense played really well as well. So Carter gets first star with 35 saves, Strobik the second star with 2 points, and Okpozo with 1 goal gets third star. Okay, so now let's take a look at how uh, good we did in that first round in terms of offense, because literally we just scored 17 plus 5 is 22 goals. We just outscored them 22 to 9 in the first round. So real good domination, hopefully that continues into round 2. Probably won't continue considering we're probably going to run into a better defensive team. Let's take a look at the player stats for round 1. So... Sam Strudwick, our defenseman, averaging two points per game in that series with eight points in four games, one goal, seven assists, and he was a plus five. Drury also over point per game, same goes with Sakic, Grbeshkov, and Keefe. Then we also have three point per game players in Forsberg, Zubov, and Dermour. And then a couple guys with three points, a couple guys with two points, and a couple guys with one point. So everybody on our team actually so far has a point in the playoffs instead for Regula, who never played at all yet. Um, but Flurry, even in the two games that he played before he got injured, he put up an assist. So everybody is doing so far in this playoff run. And then Ross Carter, pretty good considering he had a one really bad game. A 25 save percentage and a 2.25 goals against average. Okay, so who are we going to be going up against in round two? Is it going to be another team that we could just dominate in terms of offense, or is it going to be a team that's really stacked defensively and is going to make our offense dry up? Because eventually that happens where you just score a lot of goals and then your team just can't score anymore, it seems like. Like it's kind of annoying when that happens. Who are we going to be playing in the second round of the 2008 playoffs, I guess you could say, considering this is where it would be? And it's going to be the Calgary Flames. Okay, so Calgary made it back to the playoffs for the first time, I think. Yeah, I think this is the first time they've been in the playoffs. So let's take a look at their lineup. Okay, so... Yeah, they have a very deep offensive core by comparison to the Sharks. So, Brian Col Koliakovo, when was this guy drafted? Second in 2025. Also, Maxime Beaupre. A franchise center who still hasn't reached his potential really yet. Um, Ginla is up to a 90 and he's 30 years old. So Jerome Ginla going for that Stanley Cup that he never won in real life. Second line, Corey Stillman still there. So he's been there since the beginning. Dominic Guite and Daniel Desjardins. Third line, Philip Fuller with Alexi Nikitin. I almost said Alex Nikitin. Um, Sean Nash as well. And then fourth line, Wayne Lake, who's a 19-year-old medium elite, drafted third overall in 2026 with Sergey Breland and Rem Murray. So they don't have really much veterans, like only three veterans on their forward core, or four veterans. The rest of the guys are all young guys that they've drafted recently. Their defensive core, though, looks a bit more veteran-heavy as you got Ninema and Derek Morris. You also got Dmitry Kavasha, who I think they picked up, yeah, from Sweden. They also got Eric Brewer on their top four, and then on their top six, with, yeah, they actually have a pretty good defensive. They got Artem Volkov, who they drafted in 2021, and Hal Gill. Goalie-wise, they got Chris Osgood, so a good veteran who's won a couple cups in this build. He's in Calgary, and Omar Klein. In terms of depth players, they got three defensemen. Those are Boumedien, Boris Mirnov, and Karl Rakunik. So overall-wise, I'm a pretty big fan of their team. Like, they got some great youth, and then I also a tiny bit of a mix of veteran presence, and their defensive core is way better than, obviously, the Sharks were. So I think this series might be a bit more tight than the one against San Jose, and we're not fully not going to score as much goals, but you never know what could happen with our team. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in next episode, we will take it to the second round when we face the Calgary Flames and look to get back to that conference finals. So let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time.